Hello and welcome to week six recap. Uh, this week was rather exciting. Uh, the finale of a lot of these games came down to the last minute and they were not a disappointment at all. Uh, one of the first games that pops to mind is the TCU Kansas State game. Now, on paper, a lot of people were looking at this thing and TCU hands down, but that was putting jeopardy at halftime when Kansas State held a 35 to 17 lead. Now, shortly thereafter in the second half, TCU started a storming comeback, pulls ahead 45 to 42 late in the late in the fourth quarter when Kansas State kicks a field goal to take to tie the game again at 45. And with about a minute left in the game, TCU scores again and gets the final score of the game to win it 52 to 45. They stay unbeaten on the year and they stay in the top four. <laughs> uh, the next exciting game was Texas and Oklahoma. Oklahoma went to Texas this weekend and was looking for a, uh, a win to continue their undefeated season against a very, very poor, struggling Texas team. However, this Texas team was anything but poor and struggling to this weekend. They get out to a 14 nothing lead early, let up a field goal in the second quarter, but take a halftime lead of 14-3. to They go from that lead, and they maintain it for the rest of the game, to get a final score and a win of 24 to 17, they knocked off number 10 for their second win on the season. Only their second. And they beat number 10 in the nation. This is a team that if they don't run hot and cold, could be a two-loss team at this point. Um, after that, there's uh, the Georgia-Tennessee game. Now, Georgia's Nick Chubb injured himself, and that is an understatement. Uh, he injured himself on the opening play on offense for Georgia. Um, all I will say about this, I don't like talking about the hit. If, if you want to look it up, look it up. But be warned, it is, all, it is reminiscent of the Joe Theismann hit, the one that ended his career. It is not a pleasant thing to watch, and it was... It's terrifying, uh, really. <laughs> but um, Georgia, despite losing their star running back, managed to come out with a 24-3 lead with about three and a half minutes left in the first half. However, Tennessee put together two quick drives and scored two touchdowns to make it 24-17 before halftime. Uh, they then continued their scoring spree, and by the end of the third quarter, were up 31 to 24. Uh, Georgia comes back, ties the game right as soon as the fourth quarter starts. But with about six minutes left in the game, Tennessee pulls out the the touchdown, gets up 38 to 31. Now they hold off, stop a last minute hail mary by Georgia to hold on to the victory and beat number 19. Uh, another pretty exciting game was Wisconsin and Nebraska. Um, it was very low scoring in the first half, went to halftime 17-14. All of that scoring happened in the second quarter. Um, we get to the end of the game, and it's 21-20 Nebraska. With about a minute and 44 seconds left in the game, Wisconsin kicks a field goal to take the lead and misses the field goal. At this point, you're thinking, all right, game's over. There's no way they're going to get a chance to do that again. And I, I sort of wandered out of the room, went to watch a different game, came back, and there's four seconds left in the game, and Wisconsin is lining up to kick another field goal. They got the ball back, and down the field with enough time to kick another field goal. And this time, he made it. Won the game. 23 to 21. Now, 
that one wasn't a ranked uh, matchup. There was nobody ranked in that matchup. But, hey, it was still an exciting game. Um, in terms of ranked teams that went down this week, other than Oklahoma, there was also Northwestern. Um, Northwestern and Michigan, it was coming into this game. It was supposed to be a big defensive struggle between these two teams. And it it was a defensive game for Michigan, but not so much for Northwestern. Uh, the final score was 38 to nothing. Michigan locked up their third straight shutout. Um, Northwestern was just way out of their element. They've had a great season so far, and I don't think it's over for them yet. But they were just, they were outclassed by Michigan. <laughs> Uh, another team ranked in the top 20 that lost this week was number 17, USC. Uh, they played Thursday night, and they were playing against Washington. Now, the reason this game was interesting is because Washington was playing USC for the first time since their former head coach, Sarkeesian, left them to coach the Trojans. Um, it was a revenge game for these guys, and they wanted it bad. Um, and it was the defense that got Washington the win in the end. Uh, Washington wins at 17-12. to 12, But the impressive part about that game was Washington held Cody Kessler to no touchdowns, two interceptions, and only 156 yards. They won it on defense. They made USC run the ball. They, they did. It was an impressive win. Um, in other news from USC... Uh, shortly after, I believe it was Sunday morning, Steve Sarkeesian was put on uh, a leave of absence, an, an indefinite leave of absence by Pat Hayden. Um, after further investigation, Hayden changed the indefinite leave of absence to a full-on firing. Uh, they fired their head coach, Sarkeesian, on Monday. It was an interesting, uh, it was an interesting turn of events. It's uh, not the first time in recent history that uh, USC has fired a head coach right before playing U.S. Uh, Notre Dame. So it's it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting game next week. Depends on who will be their head coach, uh, their interim head coach. I don't remember his name right now. Um, those are some of the most interesting games from this week. Uh, not really thinking of any other ones right now, but I'll probably think of something after I finish this video. That's how it always works. Uh, but I will say this. I, out of the 56 games played this weekend, I got 42 of them right. That's a 75% correct. And uh, I'm doing pretty well. That puts me on the season at 318 out of 404 games, um, which is a 78.7% correct. I'm feeling pretty good about this. This is an increase from last week, so that was good. Uh, here's to hoping that I can keep increasing, uh, or at least maintain, between the 75 to 80 ads, where I like to keep it, even though I know that's really good. It's, it's uh, I aim for the stars, you know. Uh, so leave, leave me some comments if you let me know your predictions, what, what you think is going to happen, what you think about the events that transpired um, this week in college football. And uh, if, you, uh, if you like the videos, click the like button and uh, subscribe. Thanks for watching.